curved surface formula n2 by v minus n1 by u equal to n2 minus n1 by r. Let us derive this. Here, this is the rarer medium and this is the denser medium and let us assume that object is here here is the object O and uh, the light ray is traveling like this this is the incident ray this ray incident, incident at point A let this point be A and uh, when the light ray undergoes to refraction when this travels from rarer medium to denser medium this light ray undergoes refraction now let us draw the refracted ray this is the refracted ray uh, let this point be I this is the image I now OI is the incident ray and OA, OA, I is the re refracted ray and uh, this is the center of the curvature this is the center of the curvature C if you draw a perpendicular uh, join C and A we get the normal run at point A if you join the center of curvature and uh, the point of incidence A if you draw a straight line like this that becomes the normal run at point A point of incidence now the angle between the incident ray and the normal is called the angle of ref angle of incidence this is angle of incidence let it be theta 1 this is theta 1 and the angle between the refracted ray and the normal it is called the angle of refraction let it be theta 2 now let us draw a perpendicular line from A onto the principal axis This is the perpendicular perpendicular line drawn from here to the onto the principal axis, and uh, let this point be n, and uh, let us assume that the refractive index of this rarer medium is n1, and that of the denser medium is n2, and uh, the angle is made by the angle incident ray, normal, and the refractive ray alpha beta gamma respectively this is alpha and this is beta and this is gamma this is beta now in this ray diagram we have two triangles from this triangle we can say that alpha plus beta equal to theta 1 from the triangle AOC you can say that alpha plus beta equal to theta 1 and we have another triangle here that is uh, ACI ACI is the another triangle triangle ACI is the another triangle from this triangle I can see that beta equal to this is beta beta equal to theta 2 plus gamma from this figure theta 2 equal to beta equal to theta 2 plus gamma implies theta 2 equal to beta minus gamma so from this seven that is alpha plus beta angle of refraction is theta 2 that is beta minus gamma and refractive index of the first medium is n1 and that of second medium is n2 Snell's law tells that n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2 n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2 this is the Snell's law in this let us uh, substitute these two values theta 1 and theta 2 we get n1 sin theta 1 equal to alpha plus beta 
and theta b equal to sin beta minus gamma this is sin theta 2 again let us look into the figure this is the incident ray OA is the incident ray if this incident ray is coming closer to the principal axis it becomes parallel to the that becomes a parallel to the principal axis if this ray is coming closer to the principal axis it becomes parallel parallel to the principal axis you see like this finally it becomes parallel Now in each case if you draw perpendicular from here to here like this Now this is the n This n comes here If you draw perpendicular from here to here we get here the n If for this line this is n So final says when the ray is coming closer to the principal axis this ray becomes parallel and uh, finally it becomes parallel to the principal axis such rays are called as paraaxial rays when the rays are parallel to the principal axis the angle is alpha this alpha becomes very very less and beta also less gamma also very less they become very very small and uh, the point n coincides with the point p in that case when alpha beta gamma are very less very small angles then we can apply that paraaxial approximation that is sin alpha equal to alpha so let us apply the paraaxial paraaxial approximation to this equation we get n1 sin alpha plus beta equal to n sin n2 sin beta minus gamma by applying paraaxial approximation we get n1 times alpha plus beta equal to n2 times beta minus gamma n1 n1 alpha plus n1 beta equal to n2 beta minus n2 gamma Here alpha, beta, gamma these are these angles are very small. So then I can take alpha equal to tan alpha. I can take beta as tan beta, I can take gamma as tan gamma, therefore this is equal to n1 tan alpha plus n1 tan beta equal to n2 tan beta minus n2 tan gamma now what are the values of tan alpha tan beta and tan gamma let us see tan alpha equal to a n by n o tan alpha equal to a n by n o tan alpha equal to an by n1 plus n1 times tan beta equal to an by nc nc this is equal to what is n2 tan beta n2 into tan beta equal to an by nc minus n2 times what is tan gamma tan gamma equal to an by n i an by n i now from this equation we can cancel this an in the numerator in all terms it is common factor in place n1 by n1 
plus n1 by nc equal to n2 by nc minus n2 by ni and we know that when these rays are parallel to the principal axis the, the point n coincides with the point p so after applying the paraxial approximation i can replace the point n by p so here i can write no as po here the po is the object distance this implies n1 by n y equal to po plus n1 by pc n can be replaced by p n2 by pc pc is the radius of curvature minus n2 by pi pi is the image distance now what is po pc and pi pc po is the object distance that is minus u and pi is the image distance that is from here to here is it is a v the distance is v this is this image distance is v and pc is the 2f total distance is 2f from here to here now let us substitute these values we have n1 by po is the object distance that is minus u n1 by pc that is 2f n2 by pc n2 by 2f minus n2 by pi the image distance that is v now i can write the equation as n2 by v let us take this term towards left hand side n2 by v minus n1 by u equal to n2 by 2f minus n1 by 2f which is equal to n2 by v minus n2 by v minus n1 by u equal to n2 minus n1 by 2f 2f is nothing but r the rate is called the curved surface formula that's all